The way it was, June the 12th, 1944, it is mid-morning, from Bomber Command Headquarters in England came the orders for the night bombing missions over northwestern Europe. For 150 RAF Lancasters from East Anglia, the target is the oil refineries at Gelsenkirchen, in the heart of the heavily defended Ruhr Valley, Germany. For 25 RCAF Lancasters from the Canadian 6th Group, Yorkshire, the target is the extensive railway junction at Cambrai, northern France, a somewhat routine mission. The losses, 10 Lancasters were lost on the Ruhr mission. Cambrai, one RCAF Lancaster from 419 Squadron, Middleton St. George, went down in flames. It was their fourth mission. The details of its tragic fate are, are well known. More about that later. Looking at the map for the mission, June the 12th, 1944, Northwest Europe had now for six days subsequent to D-Day became a major battlefield in land and sea as well as air. Hitler, expecting a more northerly invasion, had held back his major armies, hence railway transfer points like Cambrai became extremely busy. Oil from the refineries at Gelsenkirchen and other places would be desperately needed. Nuremberg, March the 30th, 1944, Bomber Command suffered its heaviest casualties in a single raid of the entire war. According to intelligence reports, Nuremberg included 50 factories and 46 other commercial plants for which nearly 800 aircraft would carry out their attack. The whole attack was to be over by 0122 with a vast majority of crews bombing in the last 12 minutes of that period, one half hour before the moon set, hopefully allowing crews to find the aiming point by moonlight, even though Pathfinder flares would already have lit up the target. A strong tailwind, 40 or 50 nautical miles per hour, <clears throat> was forecast giving added speed during the approach to the target. For this 1,500 mile round trip, the Lancasters would have to take off with about seven and a half tons of fuel, approximately 2,000 gallons each. The route showed one straight line, one leg of 265 miles, quite a departure from the usual variety of feints. Veteran pathfinders protested, but Bomber Command Headquarters adhered to the route. Problems started early. Crossing the Belgian coast, the forecast cloud up to the target area disappeared. Contrails, usually about 25,000 feet, were at aircraft level, and in the, and in the moonlight, provided ideal direction for German night fighters. Most of the slaughter took place on the way in. Burning aircraft provided a further lead. The veterans survived. The novices perished. The losses, 95 heavy bombers, 20% among Halifaxes. Lancasters were less. 545 air crew were killed. 19 members of the German anti-aircraft flak units died, plus 110 German civilians. In addition to the 95 lost, 12 were crashed on landing and 59 badly damaged. An overall casualty rate of 20.8% more than double the maximum conceivably acceptable.
Let us now go back to, to Canada, 44 years later. It's morning, September the 24th, 1988, at Mount Hope Hamilton Airport, where this afternoon the Monarski Memorial Avril Lancaster KB KM313 will become airborne on its first official flight. As our camera moves about prior to the arrival of the thousands who have or will today besiege the Canadian Warplane Museum in expectation of this memorial event, we catch a glimpse of a variety of vintage aircraft. Thanks to Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum at Mount Hope Hamilton and the events there on Saturday, September the 24th, we are able to bring to you this program. It is a story of Canadian endeavor, the Commonwealth Air Training, and the aircraft of some 40 years ago. Some vintage aircraft, privately owned, were in the lineup and flying during this historic event. The Canadian, the Commonwealth Training Aircraft were painted yellow to make them more visible. And expertise of a variety of trades to keep them flying was a wartime requirement on the many airfields in Bomber Command. It is just as true today and in the years ahead as this pampered Lancaster, the Monarski Memorial Lancaster, travels to air shows, will they be required? And there will still be for yet a number of years. World War II ground crew veterans who served their time in Yorkshire, England, will be found at Mount Hope. What a team of dedicated volunteers. again among the training and advanced types of aircraft. We note the Harvard single engine advanced trainer for those pilots who would likely end up in fighter command. The two biplanes, the de Havilland Tiger Moth with its famous gypsy engine, which with the fleet Finch built at Fort Erie, these two provided initial flying training for the greater part of the duration. The Stearman, a slightly larger biplane than the Tiger Moth, used in the United States for initial training. <clears throat> Two famous Battle of Britain fighters, the Hurricane and the Spitfire, in desperate short supply during those precarious days of 1940 are cherished reminders of the way it was and will play a key role in the Canadian warplane heritage as companions and escort for the Memorial Lancaster in the years ahead. The Hurricane and Spitfire were each powered with Rolls-Royce Merlin engines, 1030 horsepower. Eventually joined by the U.S. Republican Thunderbolt with its 21 horsepo 2100 horsepower radio air-cooled engine. A remarkable long-range escort for the daylight fortresses and liberators. Our walk around on this beautiful September 24th, blue skies, light winds, warm, ideal for the vintage aircraft flights and the thousands gathered for the first official flight of this second in the world restored Lancaster to fly. We go into Hangar 3, built in 1940 to house Avro Anson's and Tiger Moths, now the home of the Lancaster, whose wingspan requires its full width. Currently, to the rear of Hangar 3, still leaving room for the Lancaster, are a variety of aircraft, an Avro Anson, 
an AT-10 Stinson. The military version was part of the generous lend-lease from the USA to Britain and Russia as navigation trainers. The comprehensive specifications of the Lancaster, a rather impressive list showing its carrying capacity, the power supply. We also, in hangar number three, see uh, two Navy aircraft, uh, carrier aircraft, with folding wings. A model of the Lancaster. Part of the restoration crew of this Navy aircraft it looks like a German Hellcat. And the Avro, Anca, uh, Avro Anson <coughs> requiring a few repairs. We're outside of Hangar 3 once more and going to revisit the, uh, uh, the flight uh, lineup where aircraft are being prepared for the vintage air show which will accompany the uh, memorial service. The Cornell or Chipmunk, um, the Harvard, which we spoke of earlier, many of them will be recalled because of they were rather noisy and the Supermarine Spitfire. <coughs> Ground crews are preparing, and the flight crew are preparing the Lancaster. The pilot engineers are in the cockpit going over the many checks and planning the trip, which will be made shortly and the various demonstrations that they are likely to carry out once it's airborne. We return briefly to hangar number three and the Avro Anson, which um, Canadian warplane heritage inherited from International Nickel at Sudbury, a rather generous donation to the museum. These aircraft were airworthy. This one has subsequently become somewhat unairworthy. Back to the crowd are gathering for the beginning of the service. halfway up the outside stairway of the old control tower on top of hangar number three. 
where the Memorial Lanks VRA will be hangered. We leave shortly on a five-minute helicopter flight over Ancaster Township and the village of Mount Hope. These skies and Mount Hope Airport 45 years ago were shared by RAF navigator trainees from England and elementary pilot trainers from Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Some came up from the United States before they had entered the war themselves. For the overseas trainees, being stationed near the city of Hamilton was ideal. Some, as you can imagine, acquired Canadian war brides. Hamilton hospitality was super. In a few minutes, we will see and hear part of the memorial ceremony on the stage in front of the Lancaster number of visitors so far exceeded the Heritage Committee's expectations. The Mount Hope Airport had to be closed to any further vehicle traffic early in the afternoon. We're about to get a glimpse of the field showing the uh, large number of fly-in light aircraft for this occasion. Our camera will pick up shortly two giant military freight helicopters. The fuselage of the now restored Lancaster was airlifted nine years ago from Godridge, Ontario, after the wings and engines had been removed. The Levat sound truck is being used for this entire show and another phenomena appeared as veteran ground crew and air crew had their wartime squadrons announced and a variety of surprising reunions resulted. Here we have the uh, two of the uh, training aircraft, the Harvard and Yale, being warmed up to take part in the air show and the DC-3 uh, at the moment taking off. After they complete their part of the show, the um, single engine advanced trainers will take to the air and will be remain airborne during the Lancaster flight. The advanced single engine trainers are about to take off. The Master of Ceremonies is about to commence the memorial service from the stage in front of the Lancaster. The color party followed shortly by the dignitaries approaching the platform. the military freighter helicopter. In a moment or two, the members of the official party will be arriving. 
chairman for this afternoon, afternoon's proceedings is Mr. Dennis Bradley, who is the president and founder of the Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum. Support those people, over 4,000 in number, who have provided the cash. It went along with the corporate donations of Narski Lancaster VRA will fly. And it is my privilege, on behalf of the Canadian Warplanes Heritage, the restoration crew, and people everywhere who are interested in vintage aircraft, to commission her. Made with her all the memories of all who hold across this nation, once built for war, now come on, for our Queen and for Canada. May God bless her and all who fly in her. Amen. Lancaster, the name of Eddie Minarski, perished in. It's, uh, it's in the possession of 419 Squadron in uh, Cold Lake, Alberta. They requested it be flown today in the inaugural flight of the airplane. The airplanes that are flying here today are part of the Canadian Warplane Heritage Collection. These are the light trainers and the observation airplanes from Canadian Warplane Heritage. Starting out the lineup, the High Wing Fairchild F-24. Number two in line, the De Havilland Chipmunk. We'll tell you a little bit about him later on. Number three in line, a rather incredible airplane. There weren't many of them built, there's only two left. And this is the Fleet Model 21, the North American Harbor. Well, two of these are the, the later and later on.
plucky plane that could take a lot of punishment and then get its crew safely home. It's been more than 40 years since Lancaster bombers filled the skies during the Second World War. But Dan Bjarnason has the story of a group of Canadians determined to keep one Lancaster in the air for a long time yet. Hitler turned Europe into a fortress, but Lancasters helped turn Europe into a fortress without a roof. More than 7,000 of the bombers were built. Two are now left in shape to fly. One is in England. And this is the other. After nine years of careful restoration, this Lancaster, one of 400 built in Canada during the war, is ready again for the skies. One of the volunteers on the project, Bill White, flew Lancasters over Germany four decades ago. His plane saved his life many times. A Lancaster could sustain uh, a lot of damage and still fly. I used to say, if you got one engine, one wing, and a piece of tail, you could fly back. The Lancaster commemorates Andy Minarski, a Victoria Cross winner from Winnipeg, who perished trying to save a fellow crewman as their bomber was crashing in flames over France. Break off! You heard them! Bombers were cramped and uncomfortable, but no one here is complaining, certainly not Bob Hill, who in his other life flies Air Canada jetliners. Uh, as far as comfort in the airplane, uh, it's, it's, it's fine. Uh, there's probably a couple of thousand people would uh, love to take my place if I said it was uncomfortable. This Lancaster will tour North American air shows in the air at most for an hour or so each time. In the war, they'd be aloft all night. Okay, the plane had a toilet. Yeah. What happened to the contents? Oh, now and again, we just empty them over Germany. Open the door and dump it out. <laughs> one by one, the Merlin engines kick to life and pull the aircraft into the sky. Once Lancasters flew, along with American planes, on massive thousand bomber raids, a blanket across the sky. This lonely ghost of history, this survivor, should fly with pampering well into the 21st century. Dan B. Arneson, CBC News, Mount Hope, Ontario. Lawrence Bignon, for the fallen. With proud thanksgiving, a mother for her children, Canada mourns for her dead across the sea. Flesh of her flesh they wear, spirit of her spirit, fallen in the cause of the free. They went with songs into the skies. They were young, straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them.